Hey, what is up everyone? It's Rich. All right, welcome to Super Fun Sunday and a very, very special video. It's very special. So we're going to break 10,000 subs here today. So I, I have a little intro that I want to do to the video. It's going to be really good. You guys are going to love it. So first things first, I had an actually really weird thing happen this morning that was super cool. Uh, this is steampunk art. We're going to do black and white steampunk art today. So this is going to be really fun. And it's going to go full circle to um, uh, the second story that I'm going to tell really fast. So we'll we'll look at a little bit of this while I'm jabbering. Um, um, so yeah, this morning um, they've been doing like planned power outages in my neighborhood. And so my local Starbucks was closed because there was no electricity. So I had to drive to another one. When I got there, it's not super far. It's like a mile from the one that I normally go to. And um, there's a homeless guy that's always at the Starbucks that I normally go to. And he's got a computer and he sits and, um, uh, you know, he's he's just, you know, he's doing his thing. He works on the computer. And over a period of time, I'd actually seen him kind of get more parts for his computer. And uh, he had a tablet. And, and uh, one day I kind of saw that he was doing art. I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. Like, like he's, it looked like he was maybe doing web design or something like that. Or like was in some, he was in a program, like an art program. And uh, so I saw him this morning at the other Starbucks. And I kind of, I was I sat down kind of near him and I was like, like, Hey, I'm like, how you doing? Like, like, I guess we got, you know, we rousted from our normal spot. We had to come to this other Starbucks. And, uh, I started talking to him and, uh, asked him, I go, I go, you know, what, what, what kind of art are you doing on your computer? And anyway, so come to find out he's learning Blender and, uh, he's, he's going to try to get a portfolio together to get work, you know, doing, you know, design or art or, and things like that. And so I, I said, I go, I go, Hey, I go, you know, well, when you're trying to get your portfolio together, let me know. I can look at it for you and help you out and whatnot. And, uh, so we started chatting a little more and <laughs> this is so crazy. This is the funniest, neatest, coolest thing ever. Um, he's a big Robert E. Howard fan. And, uh, he was saying that he had been looking at creepy magazines and he was a big fan of this one artist and he couldn't think of the name. And I just kind of guessed. And I said, Bernie Wrightson, he goes, yeah. And then he goes, and he goes, uh, and I was on YouTube. <laughs> I think some of you will know where this is going. He goes, and he goes, and I'm, and he goes, I, I was watching this video about Bernie Wrightson on YouTube and he goes, and I'm listening to the voice. He goes, and I'm thinking that it's you. <laughs> and, and so he had figured out, <laughs> Well, this is all coincidence, though. This is how small and crazy the world is. He had gone to YouTube and was watching Bernie Wright's and videos. And as he was watching it, he recognized my voice from hearing me talk at Starbucks to a friend of mine who we hang out there every morning. But isn't that funny? Like, what a small world. So I'm going to try to hook him up with some uh, Wright's and... Uh, like files or something, something that he can carry with him and not have to have a lot of weight. I was going to give him some comics. And I was like, you know what? I'm nearly sure that he lives on the street. So, um, you know, like he doesn't need more stuff to carry around. So I was thinking like if I could give him digital files of like rights in and some of that, that type of stuff for Zeta, like it might kind of like inspire him. So isn't that cool? That's really, really neat thing. So we're going to start. That's why we're starting this, this 10,000 subs celebration. And then the second thing that I wanted to talk about was, um, we'll look at more steampunk art while, while I'm jabbering. Um, is, is YouTube and, and, um, how I came online and why I communicate with people the way that I do online. So the first time that I really got active on communities was like Yahoo groups. And I would join fan groups of artists that I liked and bands that I liked. And, and, uh, it was just really fun to be part of a community. So it went from the Shane Glines drawing board to DeviantArt. And when I went to DeviantArt, you know, I had already been a professional and I went there as a fan, a fan of art and as an aspiring artist, even though I was a professional, um, to meet people and to talk to other artists, no matter what level of skill they were at. And what was great about DeviantArt in the early days was that it was a community and it was a place for people to connect and to not have boundaries of oh, I'm this level of artist and you're that level. And Shane Glein's drawing board was the same way. I always found it incredible that these really amazing animators um, were were hanging out with like people who were just literally starting to draw. I thought that that was so cool. And uh, that was sort of the appeal of DeviantArt to me was the same thing. But what ended up happening was 
all of a sudden, about two or three years into me being on DeviantArt, all the pros started to show up. And the pros had a very different agenda. It was like, I have described it as like Coca-Cola and Pepsi, Pepsi coming in. Oh, okay, this is a place where there's a lot of fans and people that are into art. I'm going to set up camp. And, and they were immediately like trying to sell stuff there and promote and all this like weird stuff. And I was like, I mean, there's nothing wrong with promoting. I think now it's it's a little different. But it, it was like they kind of missed the point of DeviantArt, which was it was an artistic community. It was kind of like we were all having a picnic and just talking about art. And there wasn't these levels of uh, like it's weird because these words mean different things now. But I call it exclusive or inclusive. To me, DeviantArt was inclusive, meaning that it included everyone. But but what what I saw when professionals came is not only were they just immediately trying to sell stuff and promote because there was a lot of eyes there, um, it was still exclusive. They were only talking to other pros. You could see it in the comments section. There'd be all these comments. You know, someone would post a piece of art, and there'd be ninety nine replies, and and you, you know they would only answer another pro that had showed up on the scene. And I always thought it was weird, and I didn't like it, honestly. Um, and then, you know, that carries over into today, but what ended up happening is the tables got turned on the pros. All of a sudden, that fan interaction became very integral into the whole concept of what social media was. And you see it differently now. So when I came to YouTube, it was the same thing. It was me kind of trying to escape that stuff that exclusivity and be inclusive. And so I came on YouTube and what I wanted to do is I wanted to meet people that were in art. And I don't care if you're a professional or if you're a beginner or what, I just wanna meet people that are in art. That's where, that's the long and short of it for me. Um, and uh, so when I started my YouTube channel, funny enough, and I think this is a neat kind of full circle moment on this too, was my first video was uh, Chris Boccolo original art. So I just took a stack of Chris pages that I had and um, kind of went through them and talked about them. But, uh, you know, I was nervous. I didn't really know kind of how to narrate uh, videos on YouTube. And one of the funniest and most memorable comments I've ever had on any YouTube video, and I thank this person, if you're still around, I actually appreciate this comment because it made me up my game on YouTube. And it was literally one word that wasn't even a word and the comment was z z z z z z z z z boring <laughs> my narration sucked it was it's informative i think it's still up it may or may not be it was my my youtube channel was getting way too many videos uh so i i just i i put a bunch of them private i'll eventually open them again they're not hidden for any other reason other than it was just there was too much this is such a great page um, but, uh, yeah, I always, I always, uh, like when I saw it, it, it stung a little bit. Like you're like, ah, oh, shit. And then I listened to the video back and I was like, oh man, he's totally right. Like this is boring. And, and, uh, so it was just a very memorable early comment and, uh, the guy nailed it. He nailed it with not even a word, just the symbols of a word. And to me, that was probably the most helpful feedback that I ever got on YouTube. So, all right, what is it? It's Sunday. It's super fun Sunday. We're going to knock out some Chris Boccolo steampunk. I love you all. Thank you so much for 10,000 subs. Let's do this. <laughs> all right, so this is the first issue. These are The, the copies are pretty out of order, um, but this was the very first issue of steampunk that I worked on. And in fact, this probably was the very first page of... Oh, no, this was the second page that I inked. There was a... I did one test page for Chris. So... How I got the Chris Bocklo job was I had just inked Travis, literally had just finished, and I was called by Scott Doombeer one day to come into his office, and he said that he wanted to ask me about something, and uh, the caveat was that I could not say yes until I heard all the information. <laughs> So it's like my interest was piqued. <laughs> and uh, so I went in and he goes, hey, he goes, look, we're going to be doing a fourth cliffhanger book. We've got J. Scott Campbell doing Danger Girl. I'm just saying this like he didn't say this, but just for people that don't know. So J. Scott Campbell was doing Danger Girl. Uh, Joe Matarera was doing Battle Chasers and um, Umberto Ramos was doing Crimson. I actually worked on all three of those books, too. I did a lot of issue seven of Danger Girl. I assisted on Battle Chasers a couple times and then I think I inked one. 
I inked one full issue of Out There or Crimson. I can't remember what it was. It was later in the run, but something happened, and I, and I had to do a full book of one of those. Um, this is the second page from the story. And uh, anyway, so yeah, so Chris Bacolo was going to be doing a cliffhanger book, and uh, he was looking for an inker. I don't think I was the first choice for the book, to be honest. Um, uh, and the, the caveat was more of like, hey, would you be willing to take this rate? Because they're going to spend a lot of money on colors, because colors were becoming a big deal, like... Um, Liquid had completely sort of raised the game, and so he was going to take a lion's share of the budget um, for the book and throw it into uh, the colors. So I took a little bit of a pay cut to do the book, but I've been such a big fan of Chris's stuff really since I had started collecting comics that um, you know I didn't really mind. I knew the original art would be pretty valuable, and um, you know I. I I think sometimes the assumption with comic book artists is that we maybe all know each other better than we do, or that there's there's more of um, you know, it, it's like you can definitely work in comics and not know tons of people that people might assume that you know. Even within Wildstorm, I mean, I'm telling you, there's there's a lot of people that worked at Wildstorm that that you might assume that I know that I really don't know at all. You know, it's very very possible. Um, but, uh, yeah, Chris always kind of was in another orbit. So this is Art T. Bear's inks. This is an interesting thing. So this piece was inked as a promo before, um, the book, uh, came out. And so this is the only page of steampunk that I didn't ink. And Art did beautiful, beautiful inks on this. He's such a great inker. And, uh, honestly, his work with Chris on Uncanny X-Men was actually a big inspiration, uh, for me and and um i i just i think he's great and honestly this piece looks better than my early inks <clears throat> on chris i think it's just got way more magic magic and pop i don't know if i had seen this when i had originally started inking the book though to be honest but um anyway somehow i got a photocopy of this i, I don't even know how i don't i don't remember ever seeing the original board but clearly somehow i got a copy of it um but anyway so uh yeah I really, really was excited to ink Chris, and um, away we went. Two years we worked together. I inked every single page of Steampunk. You'll always hear me say that because I'm so proud of that fact that I never gave away a single page once I took over the book, which is very rare for, for Chris um, on his comic book work. So it was a lot of work. I mean, there was definitely times where he would skid into home plate kind of right at the... Um, <laughs> at the finish line and, and I would have to really knuckle down and, you know, um, you know, focus. It's, it's not easy to do. Um, and, uh, yeah, the stuff was just so creative and so fun. I still, to this day, when I see this stuff, it really, really gets me hyped, um, to draw and ink. And it's just kind of, it's, it's just a really, really cool book. So people will always ask, so I'll throw this out too, is, is there are two, collections of steampunk that you can get if you can't find the single comics and generally speaking you can spot them on amazon or ebay and the first one is called manimatron i think and the second trade is called drama obscura one has got a bluish co cover and then one is kind of a silverish color cover <laughs> color and cover um but uh yeah, I'd highly recommend them. It's it's you're not gonna probably have a comic book similar to it in your collection, and uh, it's just really really cool art. It's just they're neat designed characters, um, and uh, it's kind of all win. It's, it's all win. Such great perspective on this. But yeah, so my, my point of the whole preamble on the um, exclusive, inclusive, like how people think is, is, is even when I got on YouTube, I didn't start Patreon, even though people were bugging me about getting on Patreon forever until I had 200 videos up on YouTube because I wanted to earn it. I wanted to do the work and make the connections and really have people understand that I'm really here just to be here. I'm not here to sell shit. I'm not here to get my brand out there more. Um, I'm not, you know what I mean? Like, like it, again, this is just my own point of view and how I operate. Um, but, uh, yeah, so it was important for me to say that because it, I think over time it, people can lose track of the order of things and how things roll out. But 
I came here to meet all of you. That's why I'm here and to share art. And I've stuck with it. My cat is dying to get in. She's like, Rich, 10,000 subs and you're not letting me in. Dude, this is bullshit. <laughs> I have to be careful now because my my channel is all ages. I'm not supposed to be saying bad words, I think. So cool. But, uh, yeah. With all that said, though, my Patreon does kick butt now. So definitely check it out. I apologize to all the patrons that I haven't posted more so far this month. I will get on it. I've got uh, a few videos in the can for you guys. I just... uh. I needed to listen to them back one time and maybe make a slight edit on one or two of them. But other than that, they're good to go. We're going through um, perspective right now. And uh, I have an inking video also ready to go for y'all. So they're coming. It's just a busy week. I have to get stuff in before Thanksgiving. And this is a later issue. So we're on issue 10 for some of these pages. Let me... I'm going to pause the thing and let my cat in. Oh, let me... Okay. Yeah, my one cat really wanted in. This is a special day for all of us. <laughs> but yeah, so so for the channel, my 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 goal moving forward, honestly, is to to really kind of reinvent my channel. To be honest, um, I I I have a lot of things that I've wanted to do with the channel. Um, and uh, oh, speaking of things, dude, I saw Mandalorian last night. The first episode was so good. I watched episode one and two, but. Man, I hadn't seen some. I, I, I'm gonna even say this too, because I, I, like I, I was driving home and I knew that I was gonna watch it, and I, I was like, man, I'm so sick of Star Wars. Nothing has really connected with me. I, I, I can appreciate the art design and the things, and I think the color palettes are really great on the last few movies, and there's some really, really cool stuff. But overall, I don't know if I've been really satisfied with with Star Wars stuff. When I watched that first Mandalorian episode, I was just like, yes. There's not going to be spoilers with this, just to be clear, so you don't have to, like, freak out if you haven't seen it yet. But I was so... It it, it reminded me of how kick-ass Star Wars can be. And, man, kudos to Jon Favreau and the writer. Uh, I mean, I think he wrote it, but but the other guy. The, the two of them... It feels fresh, but it still feels familiar. It's the perfect balance. It just was really, really good, and it it actually it was it was inspiring. And I honestly went into it going like, oh god, like am I gonna have to try to force myself to find things I like? But it's okay. Now the cat wants out. Hold on. But yeah, that was that was really really cool to see. Um, it's it's just really cool. The characters are great. So I'll leave it at that because it, it's it's still fresh and there could be a lot of people that haven't seen it yet. But but uh, I enjoyed it a lot and I I really was worried that I wouldn't. Oh, here's a pencil photocopy. It's it's funny because a lot of these photo well all the photocopies I'm going through right now are just eight and a half by eleven, um, and I. At that point, when I would archive this stuff, sometimes I would only make small size copies because it would just get so cumbersome having uh, 11 by 17 photocopies of everything. Um, you know, when you're sitting on 12 issues, that's 240 photocopies. Um, and you multiply that by, you know, 5, 10 years of professional work. It's a lot. <laughs> so. Love the chains. This stuff was actually pretty inspirational and influential to people. Um, I think it's it's really difficult to emulate Chris and and you know find things that you can sort of extrapolate and sort of pop into your own work. But um, definitely, especially at this time, I know I would see samples of people's work and and um, they would definitely use like little things from this. Which is cool. I mean, it's neat, you know. What what ends up happening, honestly, is a, a lot of people... Um, uh, sorry, I lost my train of thought. Um, a, a, like, a lot of people uh, love the, the series. That's the one cool thing is, is um, you know, whenever you kind of bring it up, like, people go, oh, my God, that's, like, one of the coolest, like, comic book series ever. It's very flattering, and, you know, credit to Chris and Joe Kelly because this is their, their baby. I just was lucky enough to ink it. 
And, you know, I mean, I've, I've said this before. I mean, there's definitely been talk of, of coming back to it. I would love to do it. I would do it. Um, you know, I would definitely commit to a year of steampunk if they ever want to get it off the ground. So, um, you know, it's not off the table. I'm telling you, like, there's been talk about it on and off for a few years. So, you know, I don't want to get people's hopes up, but, but it, it's, it's not like the conversation is dead in the water. Definitely not that that's, wouldn't be the case. But, you know, there's a chance that, who knows, you know, Tim Townsend might ink it or something like that, you know. And then I'll just do a book called Steampunk with, like, two N's. <laughs> totally different, but exactly the same. Oh, man. Seeing those black chains reminds me of doing this book and, like, how much time this stuff took. Like, imagine, like, filling in the blacks on all this stuff. There's so much work. Oh, my gosh. really cool piece but yeah hopefully today is super fun <laughs> i've been forgetting to do my tagline today i had a lot i had a lot to get to it was funny as i wasn't originally going to bring up that whole thing about dvnr but i think it's an important it was an important transition for me getting on youtube and really honestly my inspiration for youtube was uh two or three different channels and i'll i'll, I'll try to give them shout outs although sadly two of the guys are dead um, but, uh, it was a statue collector show called Immortalized in Stone with, um, Lou and Vic, and they both passed away separately about a year apart. It was very, very sad. Um, but they had a sideshow statue collectible show that I absolutely loved. I loved, I looked forward to it. They would do a live stream, I think on Monday nights. And it was just, it was like two friends that were just nerds about comic statues and i love their channel and i it was funny as they would be going on and on about like you know david finch or or you know some something that was something that i worked on they had no idea that i even worked on it it was really funny so you know i just enjoyed it as a fan and then um there was a couple of guitar channels uh, johnny bean and um one other one I, I can't remember what it was but those really were my inspiration to get on YouTube because I, I just found myself really liking the fandom of it all. I like to see people that were really into something so passionately that they had the nerve to get on YouTube and just talk about it and, and share their fandom. So that really was my angle. And, and the problem is, is because there's like all this drama and stuff going on in comics, people assume that because I do comics, somehow I have any interest in it, which is un inaccurate. Um, you know, I'm just into art. That's it. That's the long and short of it. If you want to talk about art, fine. If you want to talk about all this other stuff, I'm the wrong person. It's it's like, I just don't follow it. I literally do not follow it. So, you know. It's not even that I'm not into it. I'm just, it's just, uh, <laughs> Yeah, it's like, I just don't care. Because <laughs> th this is the thing, is is... Doing art is always going to get criticized. If you write stuff, it's going to get criticized. If you draw stuff, it's going to get criticized. That's nothing new. There's nothing new about something being controversial in a book. It's been going on for hundreds of years. They've been burning books forever. You can put a new paint coat on the drama, but the drama's always there, baby. You just got to do it. Write your stories and tell them. If something sucks, ignore it. This is like this is wisdom for from me to you. If you don't like something, then don't support it. If you like something, support it. Boom. You're done. <laughs> See, he knows. Support the good stuff. Forget about the crap. So kick ass. But anyway, yeah. There's a CG guy that I, I really like his channel. I can never remember his name. He's got like a Russian name. He does um, special effects for like movies and video games. He's really good. He's really, really freaking good. His channel is beautiful though. Like every video he puts up is like a work of art. He definitely does post-production like editing and stuff like that. And he's probably got cameras that are 
twenty thousand dollars you know like like it's it's a legit thing he's kind of my role model though for what i want to kind of move my channel into i really really want to make it slick so these are the these are the garage days you're seeing now you're seeing the like like me <laughs> playing at a club for like 20 people but we're gonna make this way more professional it'll be way better So. so the this guy right here is called Faust, and that's Fiona. Faust is kind of like a, I don't even know, like he's like a bad guy. That's his flute right there. It was how I could always spot him is like I would see his eye, and then I would see the flute, and I would go, okay, that's him. Because like on pieces like this. I think he's fighting. Yeah, well, there's Absinthe. That little face is so great. These little things. Chris halos everything, too. So it's like, man, not only is there a lot of detail, but there's halos around everything, which makes it even another layer of detail that you have to deal with. Um, but, uh, yeah, you see how, like, everything's haloed? That ends up being kind of more work because you, you're having to go around all the shapes a second time. Yeah, see, so here's Faust. So... So you can see his flute on his back right here. It kind of looks like a spine a little bit. And then I would spot his face, because usually his face would be all craggly, and then you would kind of catch his eye. Like, this is pretty hard to see what's going on. It's the back of him, and the, the flute is on his back. Love Rabid Randy. So this little guy's Rabid Randy, and then I can't think of his name. And then the dude with the top hat is Scum. Let me see if I can find Scum. And this is Queen Victoria, if I'm not mistaken. Absinthe is the bad guy. Cole Blacksmith is our hero. That might be Faust right there. Uh, yeah, I think it is. He's just got a cloak on. There's Scum. See the guy with the kind of brim hat? And Fiona. So cool. Mm, 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 mm. I'm going to keep this video at 30 minutes, and uh, this week should be good. I Honestly, I almost wasn't going to do a super fun Sunday today because I, I need to turn in um, my pages tomorrow morning, but I actually was able to do all my work except for one page, so today I need to knock out one page, but... Um, next week we'll start to get more normal and then I'm going to get real busy the first like week or two of December. And then by about the middle of December, things like lighten up because the, the company start to shut down. I'll still be on deadlines that whole time, but, um, yeah, the publishing is weird. We have these cause the printers close. So you have to get all your books in by like a certain drop dead date. It gets all weird. It's always like, this like uh, storm of activity. This is such a cool page. So much detail. Boom. Here's Faust. But yeah, I would look for his eyebrows and then his eyes, and that's how you could kind of spot it. <laughs> I can't remember what that guy's name was. He's like sir or professor or something. It had like a political sort of connection to it. He's like a politician. Here's a little sketch. Chris didn't draw a lot on the back of his pages, but when he would, I would always make a photocopy of it because I always think that these little sort of bonus drawings are always kind of neat. It's interesting to see a drawing this um, stripped down because then you kind of start to realize what they Greek in to sort of set up figures. Like you see the anatomy on the back and the arm and stuff like that. So those are the shapes that they're, you know, making sure are in before they render something fully. So it's a nice little telltale sign of how people set up figures. If they're a true sketch, you know what I mean? There's a lot of bait and switch online now. everything is a show so it's like but that's been going on forever they're like here's a sketch I did it's your sketch that took 12 hours 
<laughs> oh, 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 boom. That's so cool. Oh man, it's double page spread. Okay, we gotta hustle. Oh, that was the page that was in pencil before. I don't know if you remember it, but uh, you can see uh, this is such a great little thing. This whole sequence underground is so cool. Like, look at the tracks up here, and then it comes through the scene, and then it moves through the scene, swings around this way, and then comes out down here. It's so clever. He's so good with like layouts. But yeah, I mean, it basically moves you through the whole page. So this is a double page spread. I think I actually photographed it in like three. Let me try to set it up for you. It was so big, I did it in like three photocopies. Um, oh wait, where's the other side? I guess this is a little piece. Let me see if I can get it. Or can someone see it? I think at one point I owned this double page spread. I can't remember, but that's pretty nuts. Look at that. I'll zoom in on it in a sec, but this is kind of the full composition. Issue five is nuts. I mean, I would honestly, I always say this to people, getting the traits is a nice way to pick this stuff up quickly and, and probably the most like, like less fuss and muss. I would highly recommend the, the single issues only because there's a little bit of stuff that Chris puts in the back of the book that's cool. You get the covers, and I, I think that the paper quality and stuff like that, each issue kind of has a different vibe to me, too. So it's, it's they're cool to see in the trade, but but it's like those little moments in time when the books came out, I think are actually pretty special and kind of cool. So if you can grab the singles, I would just recommend doing that. You know, but the trades are a good way to just hop in, kind of a one and done sort of deal. And they look nice on your shelf. So we already saw this page. Oh, wait, am I going through? Oh, hold on here. Just don't want to do too many duplicates. This is cool. Sorry, we're closing in on 32 minutes. My camera's going to tap out in a second, so I'm going to say goodbye now. Again, thank you guys all for, for coming by here, and uh, yeah, have a great day. Have a great week. I hope everyone's working on their stuff, and remember, overall, my channel is more for entertainment than education, um, but uh, you know, if you can get any sort of little tidbit that helps you, that's great, and you know, again, look, it's all opinion. It's all conjecture, and I change my mind on stuff all the time. So there's stuff in videos that are probably from six months ago or a year ago that if I heard it now, I would go, hmm, you know, I don't really think of it that way anymore. So even what I say, just take it with a grain of salt. You make your own opinion on stuff. What works for you, use it. What doesn't, just disregard it. All right. Have a great day. I love you all. And uh, here's to another 10,000 subs. We'll do this. Oh, yeah, this is from the first issue. We'll end it on this page. There's Randy and Scum. Rabid Randy. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, this is cool. That's Cole and his little sort of chamber thingy behind, like, stained glass windows. All right, have a great day. I'll talk to you later. Bye.